Hi, welcome to using the Decustomizer Analysis Report tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be providing an overview of the Decustomizer Analysis Report and explaining how the Decustomizer Analysis Report helps JD Edwards users to reduce their continuous adoption cost. We will also be explaining the Decustomizer Data Load UBE and discussing the Decustomizer Analysis Report UBE. The JD Edwards Enterprise One Decustomizer Analysis Report enables you to identify simple UI customizations to applications that can be replaced using the more robust personalization and extensibility frameworks. It is recommended that you run this report periodically in your continuous adoption journey to know the number of customizations that can be replaced using the personalization framework. This will continually reduce your cost of staying current with the latest updates in JD Edwards Enterprise One. The Decustomizer Analysis Report identifies the customizations done to application objects by comparing the application between two path codes. The Decustomizer Analysis Report supports tools and application releases 9.1 and 9.2. Generating the Decustomizer Analysis Report is a two-step process. In the first step, a UBE loads a table and in the second step, a UBE reads from the table to create a report. The Decustomizer Data Load UBE R9540 DC loads the Decustomizer Data Load Table F9881 DC with a list of all the customized application Enterprise One objects. To run the Decustomizer Data Load UBE, navigate to Batch Versions and then enter R9540 DC for Batch Application. Select the Data Selection checkbox and click Submit. The default data selection is displayed. This data selection will load the F9881 DC table with a list of all the customized application type of objects. Additional data selection can also be set. If you know the product code that you have heavily customized, you can narrow down the scope of the report by adding the data selection for the specific product code. For the purposes of this tutorial, let us scan the application customizations for the product code 42. After making the additional data selection, click OK. If the data selection is not specified, the data load UBE will scan all the application objects that are marked as customized. As a next step, the processing options have to be set to run the decustomizer data load UBE. Enter the values for the source and target path codes you want to compare to identify the customizations. For example, you might want to compare the production path code and the development path code. Ensure that the ESU levels of the source and target path codes that are being compared are at the same level. Note that the target path code is where the customizations are expected to be retrofitted. Next, enter the values for the processing option. Enter zero or blank to load the data according to the data selection without deleting the existing records. Enter 1 to delete all the existing records from the F9881 DC table and load the data based on the data selection. Note that setting the processing option value to 1 means that you want to clean up all of the loaded data and reload it with the default data selection or the data selection that you just made. Then click OK to launch the UBE. This data load UBE will then load the identified customization information into the F9881 DC table. After running the decustomizer data load UBE, the next step is to run the decustomizer analysis report UBE. The report will produce a combined summary and detailed report. The decustomizer analysis report UBE R9540 DC R is a read-only report that displays the information available in a decustomizer data load table in a usable format. Let us see the sections in the report. The decustomization summary gives an overview of the impact of customizations to the application objects. The decustomization summary output has five sections, namely customization summary statement, summary by path code, summary by object type, summary by product code, and customized application objects. The first section is the customization summary statement. This section will contain embedded values within a sentence. 
The sentence reads as, system has X number customized objects impacting X number product codes. In our example here, the system has one customized object impacting one product code. The first number refers to the unique number of application objects that have been customized. The second number shows the unique count of all the product codes affected across the selected path code. The summary by path code section shows the number of application objects affected in the target path code. The summary by object type section shows the object type affected by customization and shows the number of objects affected for this object type. The summary lists only the application object type that is affected. The summary by product code section shows all the product codes affected by the application customizations and shows the number of objects affected for each product code. Since we selected the product code as 42, this report will show the customizations pertaining to the specific product code. The customized application objects section lists all the application objects that have been customized. This section does not list versions for the objects. Here, you can observe the ESU match status as Y, which means that the ESU level of the source and target path codes that are being compared are at the same level. The customization's detailed report is shown in a parent-child hierarchy where the topmost parent is the object, followed by listing the simple UI customizations. A new page is created for each object. Each line in the detail identifies one specific change in the object. The decustomizer analysis report helps you to identify the UI customizations to applications. The report also gives you information of the Enterprise One application customizations that can be replaced with the more robust Enterprise One personalization frameworks. To learn more about the personalization and extensibility frameworks that will help you reduce your UI customizations, visit the Citizen Developer Frameworks page on Learn JDE. Thanks for watching.